Hey guys, I'm Holly. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. about how I run and strength train almost in equal proportions year round. No matter what race I have coming up, this is how I do it, this is why I do it. I'm gonna cover first all the benefits of getting that strength work in while you're running, and then second, I'm gonna break down my weekly training to show you how I adjust things and how I manage my schedule. Lastly, in this video, I'm gonna bust any of those myths around why you can't or why you shouldn't do both at the same time. Any questions left at the end, I'm gonna cover in a part two. All right, I'm gonna start things off here with just why I love doing both. First thing I love is that throughout the week of training, you have so many opportunities to hit different goals. You kind of spread out your efforts and spread out your focus, which makes for a lot healthier mindset. If I'm only running, I'm only focused on usually, am I running longer or am I running faster? You're so fixated on those two things. A lot of times we're running by ourselves, so we don't have anyone to even kind of spread that focus out with. We are so, so all consumed in ourselves and our performance. If I'm only in the gym, I'm probably really focused on, did I lift more than yesterday? Did I beat that athlete I didn't beat yesterday? I'm only thinking about that one specific exercise or that specific space. Now, when I spread everything out and I have different areas I'm running in, groups individually, I'm going into classes for strength training or I'm doing a workout on my own, maybe body weight outside, I have so many different environments to help hold all of my goals and efforts. And I think what that does, especially for me mentally, is make it all feel a little less serious. I am accomplishing things, but I'm not so obsessed with that one goal that it runs my life into the ground. So I basically have these points of burnout. We've all felt that where we kind of plateau when we're so obsessed with that one thing. If you've ever done like a organized sport or professional sport, I did ballet my whole life. Everything is about that one thing, and it's really nice in this stage of my life to be able to kind of spread out how I care about things, what matters to me more on Monday versus Tuesday, this week versus a month from now, et cetera. Now, I'm not a scientist, but here's how I feel physically affected when I do both because I have done periods of training where I'm only running and periods of training where I'm only strength training. From the running, I just get easier breathing at a higher heart rate, no matter where I am, whether that's a track workout or in the gym doing some sort of metabolic conditioning piece, things feel less hard to me overall. If I'm working at the same speed next to someone and I feel that I'm breathing way easier than they are, I attribute a lot of that to my running, my aerobic base. From the gym, I get that foundational strength. I feel like I have this kind of body armor against bad things happening to me. When I go out for a trail run, I'm way less worried about rolling my ankle because in the gym, I'm working on balance, I'm getting under load. I know that my quads and glutes can be trusted and I know that I can last longer with that extra muscle going up long, long climbs, whether it's an ultra race or just a brutal trail race, whatever it is. I've also found that for me, I care way more about my running and way more about my strength training because during the week, I'm only doing each of those a few times. Each workout has a really clear purpose. Whereas before, if I was just staying in one category, it kind of went to autopilot, running, going out every single day, you know, kind of picking different distances. Today, I hope I go faster on that five miles. I have a race coming up, today I have to hit my 10. It's really just about getting out there, getting out there. When I'm in the gym, if I'm going every single day, I don't even care that much to move faster or add more weight because I know I'm coming back the next day and the next day and the next day. So when I'm really mixing these two together, I'm only getting two or three opportunities at each throughout the week, which makes me really have to focus on what I'm getting out of each of those workouts. For when I run, I'm thinking, is this for speed? Am I gonna go do hills today? Am I just gonna have a feel good run that clears my head? I kinda have to think about it naturally. What am I getting out of this specific run? It just makes me value it more. When I'm in the gym two to three times a week, what is this strength workout for? I go in with intention and I didn't have that before. So I'm thinking, today I'm really working on that single leg work, that balance. I really wanna get better at evening out both sides of strength. Or I'm going in and I wanna just really lift some heavy stuff that day and I wanna make sure that I'm building and challenging myself, almost scaring myself into really good form, doing everything I can to work on increasing that load. Both sides have their own goals, but I feel I care more about each individually when I'm blending them because I have less opportunity to do it throughout the week. Now, for those of you watching this who do like doing running races, you guys sign up for different things throughout the year to look forward to, to train for, et cetera. 
I love that when I combine both, I feel equally ready for almost any distance gearing up. Of course, I have to add in those extra long runs when it gets really long, but for the most part, my training cycle doesn't change and I feel like I can do anything or sign up for anything even on a moment's notice. And I'm telling you this because I've watched it happen. I've done 450Ks, 250 milers. I did a 100 miler in 2020. I've done 10 plus marathons, some halves. And for each race, I pretty much felt the same before, which sounds crazy. Of course, I added those extra long runs, extra miles before getting through those really long races. But for the most part, my body felt the same before. I've created a foundation of training that I can really rely on that does not burn me out six weeks in, eight weeks in. And I think that's really important. With that, you clearly can tell how excited I am about doing both. So I'm gonna tell you guys my exact weekly breakdown of how I build my training and how I schedule my workouts. So everyone feels motivation differently. Everyone gets inspired differently. But for me, I really enjoy making my weeks different. If I know what's coming for the next three, four weeks, I already kind of lose some interest. So I really like knowing that I can kind of mix puzzle pieces around as I see fit at the start of each week. That is definitely why I've stayed with it for so long. First thing I do is I look at the week. This is usually on Sunday, maybe Saturday. And I think, is there anything big or specific I'm definitely doing this week that I need to kind of build my training around? Around. So if I'm six weeks out from 50K, 50 miler, maybe there's a big group run on Saturday that I'm definitely gonna be at. It's like 18 miles or something like that. That's already on the calendar. I know that's coming. So I'll kind of backtrack and build from there. If I have nothing like that, I get to kind of start with a fresh slate and I see how am I feeling on Sunday? Usually I'm pretty recovered on Sunday. I often rest that day. So come Monday, I'm ready to go. I do a whole mix of different workouts. I've covered this in other videos, but generally I'm running two to three times a week. I am strength training two, th two to three times a week. One or two days I'm doubling. So I'll do one of each of those on the same day. And I'm getting two recovery days in typically. One will be full rest, literally do nothing. One will usually include active recovery. I'm going on a long walk. Maybe I'm doing a little bike flush, something like that but that's typically the spread of my week. Now, as I said before, I want every workout in my week to have some sort of purpose. Doesn't need to be written down, doesn't need to be super specific, but because I'm splitting everything up so much into different classes and individual workouts and making sure I'm taking care of my body in between, I do wanna know why I'm doing each thing. So a good example of this would be, say I have a really, really busy like Wednesday going to be with clients, back and forth meetings, you know, filming, whatever it is. And I only have 30 minutes to squeeze a workout in. I'm probably gonna go out and run my hardest for 30 minutes. I'm gonna make that this finite amount of time. I'm gonna put on really good music or a really good podcast. I'm gonna work on high turnover, great form, and just pushing it. Really, really pushing that speed and then forcing myself to get the most out of the 30 minutes. On the other side, if I have a wide open Monday and I feel recovered from my Sunday off, I'm probably gonna be really intentional about how I am choosing my workout and if I'm gonna build onto it. So say I look at the CrossFit workout, I'm a big CrossFit person, and it looks good. We're gonna be doing you know, a good bit of lifting, a lot of you know, skill work, maybe gymnastics, that kind of thing. We've got a short Metcon in there, metabolic conditioning, so we'll get the heart rate up, but maybe not for long. Because I feel so fresh from Sunday, I'll probably add to that class. So I'll go to the class and I might do a 15, 20 minute jog before it to have that sweat going before I even start. Or I might at the end be like, I'm adding 15 minutes on here today of recovery, foam rolling, stretching to get that in for the start of the week. So when I have that extra time, I'm like, okay, this is what it's for. And then I'm gonna pair on a little bit more before or after if I've got that time, especially at the beginning of the week to set me up for success. My filler workout when I don't really like the CrossFit workout is Pilates. I really, really like the Legree method. It's long, slow burn. You basically for 50 minutes never stop moving, but it's really, really slow controlled movement. So you're really in pain the whole time, but you continue to switch body parts. So you're kind of spreading out where the effort goes. I really like this type of workout, but I will say my heart rate, you know, doesn't exceed 115 on a class like that. So say I don't like the CrossFit workout. I do want to get a good sweat though. <clears throat> I'll do that Pilates class and I'll probably pair it with a 25, 30 minute run. So I've mentioned these shorter runs that I either pair with strength or do on my own when I don't have a lot of time. But when I'm building longer run workouts and I'm creating purpose behind them, here's what I'm thinking about. Do I have a race coming up, of course. That 50K I have in September is gonna be up at a really high altitude and a lot of climbing. So my main focus there, and with most of the races I personally sign up for, am I gonna be ready to climb? 
that means on the breathing front and on the leg front. Yes, my legs are strong, but are they familiar with climbing for miles on end? So I'm gonna be doing a lot of Stairmaster work <clears throat> or running stairs outside or even in a parking garage, running staircases, whatever it is, I'm gonna be working on climbing, especially because I'm down here basically at sea level and I'm gonna be doing a race at altitude. I'll get plenty into that as I show you some training videos gearing up for that 50K. All that incline and altitude aside, I'm also thinking about distance and time on feet. Whether I have something coming up or not, I like to make sure my mind is fresh and ready to do hard shit. And I say that because it's easy to fall into a pattern of doing things that feel hard enough or just before they get really hard. And you kind of just keep things under that hour time period, keep going for months on end. Maybe you don't have any races coming up or anything like that. And that's why you might fall into a plateau. I've seen that with myself. So what I want to make sure I'm doing is keeping my discipline fresh, my willpower fresh. So every few weeks, I know I have something long in the books to look forward to. That could be, okay, I'm running two hours today, or I'm gonna go do a 10 miler. I can't even really describe it, but I usually wake up with an instinct to do something like that, whether it's that week or the next week, or I'm going to a special place, you know, vacation, I'll do it there. But I'm gonna make sure that I'm keeping that part of my body really in tune and ready for anything. And that's what I said, Earlier, I feel so ready for any race I'm gonna do because I am sharpening that tool along with everything else. So highly recommend making sure you're staying on top of that mental part of it. Now for me, I like to also keep in track, keep in touch with my hydration nutrition systems. What camelback do I use? You know, do I know that I have these sunglasses for this? Do I like my running watch right now? All those things, because if you are going to do a long race or you've got something coming up, you don't want it all to be a surprise and this big stressful moment right before the race. You wanna be like, I've been here before. And that's what I always want for myself is to know I'm ready to go. So I would say, I kind of think of that in every three week increments, I have something long in there. Again, that's usually 10 miles to start, build from there, or two hours, three hours, or some big long group run or activity that I've signed up for. As I said before, no two weeks look the same for me, and I really like it that way, but I've also been doing this a long time now. So hopefully one of the tips or ideas I presented in this video help you guys understand how you can be your own coach and trust yourself to create different weeks of training and know that it's getting you somewhere. Sometimes it's good to be really goal-oriented. I know that some people really, really thrive off of a very set plan. Some people might just plateau that way. And so in that case, I would say, be more flexible, but keep yourself motivated, hopefully using tools I gave you today. The last thing I wanna say is that when I get to do both, I'm my happiest. My body feels its healthiest. I feel way less guilty about eating what I want. I'm keeping things healthy, but I know I'm burning a lot. With that extra muscle, I feel like my resting metabolism is a lot higher functioning. I'm drinking a lot of water because I'm sweating a lot, so that kind of goes hand in hand. And more than that, I just feel like I'm focused on taking care of my body. It's my main priority because I've got so much going on, so many different workouts and communities. I have different goals and I feel like I wanna try hard in everything. So that's what keeps me motivated throughout. Obviously do what's best for you, but if you don't wanna do run season and strength season and back and forth, do both at once and then know that you're really gonna be ready for anything. Finally, I want to address the elephant in the room, which a lot of you guys clicking on this might have been thinking from the get-go, which is how do I do both without either hating my body or feel like I'm failing in my performance? Now, if I'm someone who's pretty much only running, I'm watching this thinking, okay, that sounds great, but as soon as I step in the gym, I'm gonna be adding muscle mass, adding weight, and I'm gonna automatically slow down in my running, which doesn't make me happy because I'm aiming for a half marathon PR soon. If I'm in the gym constantly and I don't run at all, I'm probably thinking, okay, I love how my body looks right now. I love how much tone and muscle I have. The second I start running, especially if you know I've heard this from a lot of guys, I'm gonna have all that muscle fall off. I'm gonna lose all of my progress I've made and it's gonna happen really quickly. Totally understand both sides here, absolutely valid points, but I urge you to consider even for a moment in this video that the benefits of combining both could give you more than the fear that you have holding you up of maybe losing results you've already gotten. It is possible to do both without taking away. You just have to find what's right for you. Of course, I have no dog in this fight, so I don't care what you do, but I do want you to see that you can get more from combining both rather than just letting this fear of doing things differently than how you've always done them get in the way. We only get one life, so I always have to remind myself that as much as so many of us love structure, 
and staying the same in our habits and our training and it's always worked so why would we fix it there is another you know maybe layer out there of performance or feeling or body confidence that we could hit if we get to do everything at once and just kind of explore those different goals in a weekly manner Hopefully you guys know by now how much I just wanna see you succeed. So no matter who's watching this, beginner or seasoned vet, you have the power to change, alter, stay with your training as you see fit. There is no right and wrong. I've said that several times through this video, but I mean it. I just offer you my perspective to show you what's worked for me and kept me so happy and motivated for so many years. If something sticks, great. If it gives you a little bit of a different perspective, awesome. But any comments or questions you have about anything I covered today, please drop them below. I can definitely make a part two, hopefully help guide you in the direction of adjusting your training or keeping it exactly as it is. I will see you guys in another video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Bye guys. <laughs>